Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft PowerPoint. In this module, I want to cover all the basics, all the basic features that you'll come across in PowerPoint. So I'm going to start off by creating three slides from the screen that you can see at the moment. It says there, click to add title. You don't actually have to click to add the title. You can just start typing and PowerPoint assumes that you're going to want to type in the title. You can also use a key command to come down. Control and enter will jump you down to the next text box and you can type your subtitle there. Obviously, you can you can click on it if you want. It's up to you, but that's the key command to come down. Now, to get a new slide, there are several ways of doing that. You can go new slide at the top there. You can see there's a key command for that. Control M. I'm not keen on that one because Control N November would be a new presentation and you can accidentally create a new presentation every time instead of a new slide. So you don't want to do that. So you can click on this button, but also if you want to do the key command, a different key command to, to control M, you can do control enter again. And because there's no text box, it just creates a new slide. So I'll go British forces, control enter, and then I'll just do three items on here. So you can see how this works. Wellington, now if I want a bullet, so it automatically gives me a bullet. If I want to um, indent that bullet, I can click on these two buttons across there, or I can press my tab key and it'll come down. And I'll type guards, press enter. Now I'm on the same line, but I want to go back to a main bullet. So again, I can use these two little bu uh, buttons on the ribbon, or I can do shift tab and that'll take me back. Then I can type the next person. Press enter, press tab, and then you type the information. Press enter, press shift tab, come back, and then you can do the next guy. Press enter, press tab, like so. Now, I don't want another bullet. I'm going to do control and enter to get a third slide. And this one's going to be French forces. French forces, control enter. So Napoleon, enter, tab, guards, enter, shift tab, Marshal Ney, enter, tab, cavalry, enter, shift tab, and then the guy in charge of the artillery. So doing control S to save, picks up as Waterloo, the title. I'll save that in documents. So there's my three slides and it's coming up and I'll say yes to that. There's my three slides. I've got a mini preview down this left hand side. If I want to move the order, I can just pick these up and just move them around if I want. The order is correct at the moment, so I'm not going to do that. The slide itself is sitting in the middle. Whichever one I click on, I can see that. Down the bottom right, You've got these little buttons, and if I click on this one, this is your notes area. It hides it or shows it, so it's showing it at the moment, but not much of it, so you can make it a bit bigger. And then what I would suggest you do here is these bullets that you've typed on the slide are just prompts for yourself. What you're going to say is you can put into the notes area. Now on the ribbon across the top there, you've got this feature in the middle there in the paragraph group. One, two, three. So this is how I would play this. When Wellington comes on the screen, I would say something like, born 1759, died 1852. So you have to say that when he comes up at least, plus other things. Second bullet, Picton, um, he forgot uniform, Waterloo. Third one, Uxbridge, lost leg. And again, you don't want to, um, Put too much down here. I've seen people put, put almost war and peace in this in the notes area. Nobody's going to read that when they're doing a presentation. It has to be prompts. This has to be prompts. You need to know the content of the of the presentation you're doing. You need to know about this subject. That's the idea. Now, once you've done a note, you can just um, move it back down again, or you can just click it off so it hides it completely. Now, coming across, you've got some other options. This is the one we're on at the moment normal if i click that it flicks it over to what's called outline view 
where you can actually create slides in this view. If I just press enter there and then shift tab and shift tab again, it'll create a slide. I'll just type some rubbish, type in enter tab. So that becomes part of this slide. Type in a list, shift tab, new slide and so on and so on. So that's what you can do, but you can also use this. Um, see that little dot there? If I click on that one and just move this up, you can actually push that up and use this to navigate text from one slide to another. So that's quite a useful little feature. And I just need to get rid of all of that because I don't want it. So I'm just going to delete these off like so. Now, if I click that normal button again, that will come back into the mini preview. The next one along is slide sort of view, which is shows you more of a preview and you'll see any colors or any animations that have been set as well. Then you've got this reading view where you can just basically go through the presentation like a like a little book. You've got some arrows down here. Where you can just flick through it either way. And then the last view is to actually show it in presentation mode. That's what it's going to look like. And depending on how, what version of PowerPoint you've got, it will depend whether you've got the um, presenter view active or not. I'm going to press escape on the keyboard, which will bring me back down to the view I was in. And if I double click on any of these slides, it takes me back to the normal view where I was, was typing before. Now, across the top on the ribbon, you've got loads and loads of features. I want to go through a few of those. Um, I'm not going to do insert just yet or draw. I'm going to design because on design, you've got some preset themes, which you can see here. If I just open it up a bit, you've got these preset themes and any custom themes that you might have done would be at the top there. So, for example, if I click on one of these, I'll just pick that one. It's applied that theme to this presentation, which is OK. You get some variants. You can change the colors of these if you want. Like so. And fill your boots. I'm going to leave it as it is. Now, transitions is basically how one slide changes to another. So you've got lots of options in here again. If I'd open this up, these are all the options. I tend to go for dissolve, but I'll go for some of these other ones a bit more dramatic so you can see what they do. Now you've got to bear in mind that these transitions do not want to detract from the presentation, which some of them will, because people will end up looking or trying to guess what's going to happen next. Now, with each of these transitions, you can change the speed of it or the length of it if you, if you use this feature at the end there. Now, I'm going for dissolve, and I'm going to apply that to all slides. Dissolve, apply to all. So that means they're all going to dissolve in. You get a little star symbol, and you get the little preview if you click on it. Like that, so it's going to show you what that dissolve is going to look like in presentation mode. Now, you've also got on the right here sound. These sounds are preloaded. I don't tend to use any of these, especially on slide transition, because it can be annoying. But you can add your own sound if you want from the bottom there. Um, and you can have it knocking off on the next slide. So that's a, a feature. You have to have the sound that will open up your computer. You'll have to have your sound on the computer. This bit there is about automatically clicking it forward. It's on mouse click, but you can set it to automatically go by ticking that and taking that off. And then again, apply to all. Otherwise, it'll only do it for the one slide you're on. And you can set the timing in there as well. So that's quite useful if you want to have this to run on a loop and you want to set a particular time that each slide is displayed for. So that's the transition. Next to that, I'm just going to go on to this one. You've got animations. This is how the text comes on the screen. And you can see it's all grayed out at the moment because I've not got a text box active. I have now. Now you can see all of these different colors, these green stars. These are entrance. You've got emphasis, exit, and motion paths, and then more of each of those in this list at the bottom there. Now, what I tend to tell people to do is not use these because you can only put one of these on at a time, one, and then the next one coming on would knock that one off. But if you do it through this feature, add animation, and activate the animation pane, this, so you can see what's going on, the same list of options comes up. So if I pick one of these green ones, I don't want any of these. I'm going down to more 
motion effects or entrance effects i'll go dissolve in okay so you can see it there it's collapsed I double click or single click on these chevrons it opens it up so now if i want to look at this i click on play that's going to come in there in pairs it's coming in in pairs i'm just going to collapse this down a bit so i'm going to deal with all of this group not individual ones if i drop this little arrow at the end down and go into effect options you've got effect options there as well but let's go into this because what i want to happen is i don't want any sound but i want it to dim to a different color so i'll go for pink so when it loses focus it's going to dim to pink and this is key text animation it's coming in as a pair at the moment as first level but i want that to be on fifth level now i could just put it on the second level for this because there's only two indents but i will put it on fifth just to make sure i cap capture any additional indentation that I might do later on clicking okay to that now watch what happens coming in individually and you can see that it's fading to the color that i chose so that's what i've done on that slide and I would have to do it again on this next slide same sort of thing now you might be thinking if i've got 50 slides that's going to be a long long process yes it is but there is a way that you can do it on to what's called the slide master and then it will go on every slide i'll show you that in a second so i'll just add this again so you get the idea so i'm going into effect options i'm setting the don't dim color to purple and text animation to level five okay like so so both of those are the same now what i'm talking about in terms of slide master if i just close this animation pane down if i go to um, view you've got slide master handout master and notes master slide master will get me into the back end of this clicking on that so i can now see all the different slide types if i go to the top there's the overarching one this whatever i put on here will apply to all of these subtypes as well if i just click on one type of subtype it will only apply to that type but i'm going to go into the top one i'm just going to show you how this works so i'm going to highlight these bullets let's say i want to change these bullets to something else so on the bullet list there that's the default for this theme you've got these little i call them they call it says star but i like to call them dog's paws so i'm going to put that on there that is going to go onto every single slide type. Whenever I create a bullet list, it will be that. Now, if I go back up to um, slide master, not shape format, slide master, and close it, you can see that that's on that slide and that's on that slide as well. So all the bullets are going to be these little stars, these dog paws, because I changed it in the slide master. That's what you have to do if you want to change anything on 50 slides. Say you want to change the font color or the font size or make it bold or something you don't go down individual slides you just go down into slide master and change it once and it will cascade through the whole presentation now up at the top here you've got this feature where it says sections now i haven't actually got a lot of slides here so what i'm going to do is get myself a few blank slides if i just press enter there and I'll type a title so there's something on it. So I'll just go Prussian because they were there. Do a capital P. So that's going to say Prussian. And then I'll do another one and I'll go Dutch on this one because they were there. Now, so I've got some slides here, more slides. It doesn't matter that there's no information on there because I can go and create a section. Now, whatever you do here, if I go section, add section it's added a section at the top and i can just put main there as a title rename that um got it so that's called main now they're all in main at the moment so if i click click it down they all disappear but if i click there and go add section and call that british you'll see how that this works i'll rename that british and then they're all under british now but not main and then i want one for french so i'll do another section add section call it french rename that so now i've got three sections and then i can move these so i'll move these um into the british bit 
because they were all part of that. So there's French, four British. I've moved French as well, I think I did. So move French back down into that section. So you can now ma manipulate your presentation by using these sections and you can click them down, hide them out of the way, and you can actually just move these sections like that, the whole lot, the whole set. And if I open them up again, you can also change, if I change the design um, of this one, I've changed that design. If I open up the French, the French is changed. If I open up main, the main is changed. So now if I change that one, and then what I want to do is slick those and change that one. So I've got a different design and if I click on this one let's see what happens here so the top two have gone there and the reason that's happening is because I've only got one slide there if I change add another slide in there so I've got two and I add another slide at the bottom there so I've got two if I hold my control key down and select those two I'll pick a different theme so I'll go for purple now I've got three different designs in this presentation three sections three different designs so when you're presenting it's quite clear that you're coming onto an extra another section if you like so that's sections and you get that from the home the home tab now on these bottom slides which is just a blank slide that one is i'll click on dutch what you've got on each slide is this little set of icons where you can just click on these things and it'll give you whatever you click on so for example a chart if i click on that one it's just going to give me a default chart which i then have to add some data into get a little spreadsheet coming up there which i can add some data to so i'll just go some data like so just so the thing changes you close that off and then you've got a chart like so could equally go insert chart from the top and it would do exactly the same on this one i'll go for smart art feature i'll click on that you've got loads of different options down this left hand side I'm going for hierarchy. I'm clicking on the organizational chart one and then OK. And then I get the same sort of information. So I just type some things in there. Anything I don't want, I click on the edge of it like that. And then the thing resets. So you've got sales, retail, and HR, say. And if I want to add something to that, you've got the top here, you can add shape. Add shape and it, and it reduces the size of the thing. You can also change the layout of it, make it look nice, like so. Come off that one, go on to a, another blank slide. So, other things you've got is like movie clips and uh, pictures and things like that. I'll go for a, a movie clip and see what it comes up with. So, these are all clips that I've already got on the computer. Um, I'll go for this one insert that and then you get a a movie clip which right. like so and i've put the writing on there so that's um, the movie clip now lots of other features you could do let me get another blank slide if i go um, back to insert you've got icons you've got 3d models these are preloaded you can bring those in you've got forms from Microsoft forms you can go interactive form into powerpoints you can link it into power bi there are lots and lots of things you can do in powerpoints but that's all i want to talk about in this little session just to get you going with some of the main features of microsoft powerpoint so hopefully that's of use thank you for your time i'll catch you on the next one